Imagine buying an overpriced burger but you bought it anyway because you think it's okay. Imagine purchasing a shirt without the receipt because anyway, the receipt is just a paper, right? Or imagine your car being damaged and you just thought you need to borrow money ASAP from someone for the repair because you don't know that is what your car insurance is for. Imagine being ignorant of your rights as a consumer because that's what happened when you don't have knowledge of consumer education. So today, we are going to change that. Come and have a seat while we show you what consumer education is all about. Consumer education provides the public with the information it needs in products and services so it can make well-informed decisions on what it is purchasing and from whom it purchases. It helps consumers understand their rights and become active participants in the buying process. Consumer education ensures that companies are held accountable by governing agencies and the consumers that use their products and services. Before we go deeper on what is consumer education, let us first see who is a consumer. Consumers are people who buy goods and services to satisfy their needs. As it's clear from the definition, we buy a lot of things to fulfill our needs. This may include goods like food, clothing, fuel, paper, electronic items, or etc. Services are the facilities offered to us by various agencies with or without payment. These include water, electricity, health and sanitation, education, transport, communication, or etc. So technically, by definition, we are all considered as consumers, regardless of our age, social and economic background, and level of education. Why do we need to know consumer education? We may learn the principles of consumer education in any form whether in school, nor in our experiences. And sometimes, consumers are cheated in the market because they do not get proper consumer education. So now, what is consumer education? Consumer education means to educate the consumers as to what, where, when, how, and how much to buy to use what they have bought. If you understand its definition, you will be able to appreciate the relevance of educating yourself so that you can make correct purchases. Consumers are cheated in the market because again, they do not get proper consumer education. Consumer education has today become an important part of our school and college curriculum. That is why you are here listening to this boring lecture. Oops! As per the definition of consumer education, we want you to learn about the following. What to buy. You should buy those products that meet your needs and priorities and are of course in good quality. Before buying any item, you should consider a lot of things so that in the end, you wouldn't regret buying it. Consider first to conduct a market survey or do canvassing and collect as much information as possible about the product you want to buy. Then, decide about a particular brand you really want to. A brand name is a popular name by which a product known in the market. Brand name is a name that is familiar or widely known. So on some occasions, it is recommended to buy from these brands as they have a good reason for being known. Some may find buying items with brand names expensive. But if money is not your primary concern, Relying on a brand name will give you a hard time committing mistakes. After all, quality works over quantity. Next is how much to buy. Buy just the right quantity as per your need, money, and storage space available. This prevents spoilage and wastage. Because if you buy too much from what you really need, it may waste all your resources. So you need to set your mind to buy only the essential things. You can also create a checklist. Write in a notebook to keep on track of the essential things you need to buy. Where to buy? Purchases. 
can be made at retail shops, cooperative stores, company showrooms, authorized dealers, or at wholesale markets. If you are looking for grocery items, it is recommended to have a look at the grocery store's on-sale section as some items are being bargained from time to time. When to buy Some goods should be bought when they are in seasons, like fruits and vegetables. Others should be bought during the off-season or in genuine discount sales like room coolers, electric heaters, or etc. Buying items or foods in seasons can guarantee that these are at a low price, unlike foods that are not in seasons. You know what they say, right? It's the law of supply and demand. The lower the supply, the higher the demand and vice versa. So tips when buying something. It is best to visit shops when the shopkeepers are relatively free and also avoid Sundays and evening as far as possible as you will be exhausting much of your time lining up in a cashier. Tuesday and Thursday afternoon are the highly recommended days when buying something. Another tip is that when you are booking a flight, avoid the holidays as much as possible as these dates are much more costly than those that are not. Also, buy a ticket one more or two months ahead of time. If you can do more than that, then why not? How to buy Things can be bought either in cash or in credit. You pay less when you pay cash, and if you buy in credit, you end up paying more than the original price. Because you will get tempted to buy more because you know you have money. You may save and buy by paying cash or buy in credit with installment payments. Analyze the terms and condition in the case of installment purchases. If it is worthwhile, buy the goods in installment rather than exhausting your savings cost reserves. Like for example, if you want to buy a washing machine, you can have an installment payment for this if you really need the item. Well, in the end, the choice is yours. Also, ask for the guarantee and warranty cards along with the receipt. After all, it is your right. How to use Learn about the proper use of any product or service. This is also one of our responsibilities as a consumer. To ensure that you are safe using the product and to make your product last longer. Read instructions carefully before using and always follow them to avoid any problem. You can also ask for a demonstration of the usage to really learn how to use your item that you want to buy. Now, I believe you already got the point on why you need to study consumer education. So this time, let's talk about the benefits of knowing this. Advantages of consumer education What do you think are the benefits of consumer education? How can you put to use what you have learned so far? Well, you may probably say that it helps you to Develop the ability to decide and choose things intelligently Demand safe, reliable, and good quality products at a reasonable price Be alert, well informed, and vigilant against corrupt practices in the market And take suitable action when faced with a problem All the points that are listed are the advantages of consumer education now, what will happen if we don't have any knowledge of this consumer education? Yes, consumers will face many problems as they go to the market or as they purchase the items they want to buy. So here are the examples of problems faced by consumers. When buying products from the market, you may face certain problems. So let us discuss some of them. The first is price variation. Many times, while purchasing products, you may notice that the price of the same item is different in different shops within the same market. There are also price variations between markets. Why do prices vary? Sometimes, prices vary due to a certain genuine reasons, and at other times, they vary because the sale persons want to overcharge you. Let us understand the reason first. Prices are lower for the same product in wholesale markets as compared to retail markets. 
because in the market, you can save more if you buy in bulk. You can even ask for discounts when buying more than one. Prices of packed products are higher than the price of the same product when sold loose. This is due to the packaging charges in packed goods. Yeah, right, because when you add something to a product, you can adjust its prices based on the worth of the packaging. Suggested retail price. This is inclusive of all taxes. Also called SRP. Printed on the label of all products includes the commission of the seller. If he is ready to forego a part of it, he sells a product at a price lower than the SRP to attract consumers and make them regular customers. Purchasing power of people varies in different localities. The sellers charge more from people who have the capacity of paying more. For example, they claim that they provide the products clean and well-packed. The showroom is clean, attractive, and the customers can move around and select the products. And there is also a facility of a free home delivery. Products are sold at a reduced price during the end of season. Sales are at a discounted rate during the stock clearance sales are for early birds. Sellers tend to clear their warehouse to make way for the upcoming products. Products of better quality cost more than the lower quality ones or those nearing the expiry dates. As buyers tend to buy latest products as they prefer products that can last more than the other. Some of the ways in which sellers overcharge you are Selling a copy of a popular brand name as this kind of products does not have a standard pricing. Or selling items loose without a label or packaging so that you cannot read and check its real price. Adulteration and poor quality. Adulteration means addition of certain things or the removal from a product, thereby lowering its quality. Adulteration can also occur because of the use of poor quality raw materials or poor method of production or inappropriate storage of finished products. Adulteration is usually intentional. Such products may be harmful for the health and safety of consumers. However, all low-quality products may not necessarily be adulterated once. You may have heard of people suffering from diarrhea and vomiting after eating foods and sweets from street vendors. This may be due to adulteration of the food with harmful colors. Stale ingredients, poor quality cooking oil, or etc. These food items may also have been contaminated with germs. Therefore, it is important that we critically evaluate nutritional claims from advertisements and nutritional-related news stories. Another example is cases of people getting electric shock or adverse effects such as fire from poorly designed electric irons and Christmas lights may also not be new to you. Many fabrics shrink or the color fades after the very first wash and ready-made garments that are stitched badly or have loose buttons are the other examples of a poor quality products. Non-availability, hoarding, and black marketing. There may be occasions when you do not find certain products in the market. This non-availability may be because of any of the following reasons. Genuine and unavoidable reasons like off-season. Lower production or less supply due to transporter strike or a natural calamity like trough or floods. Artificially created reasons by traders to demand a higher price from you. This is due to hoarding or hiding of certain products under sale in a black market. Example at unreasonably high prices to needy consumers. Many times, when the manufacturers want to raise prices, they temporarily withhold supply of their products from the market, thus causing artificial scarcity. Even in normal periods, 
when the sellers expect a rise in prices, they hoard products. For example, you may find such a situation for rice, butter, cooking oil, vegetables, and etc. in the months of January and February. That is, just before the budget and government announcement of new policies on taxes, duties, and etc. Defective Weights and Measures Sellers use several malpractices while measuring or weighing what you buy. This may be use of irregular weights like bricks or stones or hollow buttons of iron weights, which weigh less than the actual weight. Use the weighing balance with a wooden beam that does not remain horizontal when the pans are empty. Pointers of weighing scale that do not rest at zero even when no weight is put on the pans. Placement of a piece of magnet or cardboard under the pans of a weighing scale. Meters at petrol pumps and in auto rickshaws and taxis not showing zero readings. Use of measure that may be dented or with a false bottom to give less measurements of liquids like milk or oil. Use of a short or dented measuring rod or by stretching the fabric or measuring the fabric on marked tabletops to measure less fabric or etc. The shopkeeper's intention all the while is to give you less than the promised quantity without your knowledge, thereby earning higher profits. Deceptive Trade Practices You may have observed some of the following deceptive trade practices by sellers and manufacturers. One of these are packing of small goods in large packets and packing poor quality goods in stylish wrappers that cannot be opened for examining the products inside. Use of brand names, labels, and packaging similar to good quality popular products for low quality products. Offer of attractive free gifts, sales and discounts with some low-quality products or offer of cheap free gifts and discounts that are not genuine or etc. Or selling expired articles at lower prices. Or it can also be polishing and packing second-hand articles for selling them at first-hand prices. Thus, consumers are deceived and cheated. Poor Consumer Guidance We have to often rely on the mercy of shopkeepers and manufacturers for information required to make any purchase. But they do not always give us the correct and complete information or they may themselves not have sufficient information. They talk positively about only those brands of product that they stock and get a higher commission. Some salesperson do not pay attention to consumers. They behave rudely and do not show all the items. Thus, the consumers get very little help from the salesperson while making choices. Also, there are no standardized consumer booklets available that one can refer to. To overcome the problems facing the market, one must keep yourself informed as best as possible. Remember, no scammer for an eligible consumer. Next, Exercise due care when making decisions in the marketplace. Also consider the negative costs that may arise from ill-considered decisions. When you want to buy something, don't be an impulse buyer. Always think if you really need the items or not. Lastly, honor reasonable responsibilities arising from your decision. After all, bad decisions are to first and regrets are to last. And that's all about consumer education. I hope with this little short video, you have been well educated about buying things as a consumer. So go on and buy those essential things and take this knowledge with you. This is Teacher Casey by Made Easy and see you for our next video. Bye-bye!